you know, speaking of kind of doubling down on questionable policy, yes. you know, we're having these new, I, I suppose, seasonal spikes in, you know, cor coronavirus uh, infections and so forth. And there's even some discussion, especially in some European countries, of going back to lockdowns. Yes. And, you know, clearly this isn't something you would be a supporter of. What are your thoughts here? Like I saw on the news, like Austria, they were thinking now about shifting back into lockdown. There was another country I, said, I saw, they threatened their population that the unvaccinated, if you do not get vaccinated, we're going to lock you down. Well, I think that is outrageous because, first of all, we looked at the entire body of evidence on lockdowns. We probably put together about 115 studies and, and publications that showed the lockdowns, the effect of the, the, first of all, the lockdowns just did not work. We can't find no location in this world from February 2020 to today still where you can show that the lockdowns had a beneficial effect in reducing transmission or death even. We can't find, in fact, we have studies that show us that the lockdowns drove, those restrictive policies with school closures drove uh, tremendous pain, in fact, drove transmission and death. So the question is... Let, 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 let me stop you here. I know you saw, just wait. So you're telling me through 150... 15. 115 examples that yes. you looked at, you can't find a single example where lockdowns were actually helpful in stopping the spread and doing what they were supposed to do? No, absolutely none. In fact, the general tenant is that um, in most locations where lockdowns were even done, those, if you look at the epidemic curves, the, the, the infections were coming down without the lockdowns. The lockdowns were actually implemented after the infections had come down. So that's a very, it's an eye-opening thing. It's like the mass mandates We've published also, we looked at mass mandates, and we cannot find one country. We looked at every country and every state or county in the United States, as an example, internally, where mass mandates were implemented. And we cannot find one example where a mass mandate stopped the transmission, reduced it, or stopped that. In fact, when you look at all of the curves, all of them showed that infections went up after the implementation of the mass mandate. So, in other words, all of these policies between the lockdowns, the school closures, the mass, the mass mandates, they were, I, I don't want to use the word illogical, but they were very unscientific and unsound because they did not result in what it was intended to accomplish. And now, if we are having a situation with Delta, and we know that Delta has turned out to be the mildest of all of the variants in terms of lethality, etc. We know it's infectious. Nobody has argued that. But it's behaving, the virus is behaving like how a virus normally behaves, Mueller's ratchet. As time goes on, it mutates, the virus mutates downwards. It's becoming more infectious, contagious, because it is winding down and you are putting a lot of pressure on it, it has to find a way to evade you because evade the, 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 the steps you are taking on it because it wants to find a way to infect you, use your cellular metabolic machinery to transmit itself. A virus does just one thing, replicate with, via you, via me. So it will find every avenue it could find to promote that. And the issue is this, the more you lock a society down, you achieve a few things. One, there's nothing much really to emerge from after if you really impose a strict lockdown, like what we're seeing in places like Australia. You're destroying your society. But two, you are preventing the population from inching closer, closer to population level herd immunity because the, the people cannot be exposed. They cannot become immune. So you are, you're putting yourself in a dangerous situation whenever you reopen. Every time you reopen, there will be a spike in infection and then you're going to lock down again. You are thinking that you're going to vaccinate yourself out of this. And that is a huge problem because if you brought me a sterilizing vaccine that was sterilizing the virus, proper 
full neutralizing antibodies. And we knew that if we vaccinated the population fully, we would stop this virus in its tracks. But you brought a suboptimal vaccine. So those countries that were waiting on the vaccine, they are now faced with a leaky vaccine. So they've locked their societies down. This is what has happened, waiting. They prevented their populations like Australia from getting to herd immunity, from, from, from generating a lot of natural immunity within the population, waiting for the vaccine. Now the vaccine has come, but the vaccine is not is imperfect. In fact, the vaccine is leaky. It's allowing those who get vaccinated to become infected again and potentially get ill and even die. My philosophy from day one was in line. I worked with um, uh, Dr. Scott Atlas. Um, I, I followed what the, the, the authors of the Great Barrington Declaration, Gupta, Bhattacharya, Kuldoff, brilliant individuals. I think the top ep epidemiologists in the world. I think Scott Atlas on this issue was probably the most prescient, informed individual because he brought the balance and I learned a lot from him when my short stint in the administration. His approach was simple and, I, and, I, and I've endorsed it and I espouse it and I espouse it today and I turn to countries that want to lock down again. Why don't you strongly, properly protect the vulnerable in your society? First, first, nothing else must work, or you do nothing else unless you do that. If that's the only thing you do, it will be successful. But do it properly. We have failed in the West, in the United States and in Canada. For example, about 80% of the persons who died in Canada were in nursing homes. We failed. We failed to protect the vulnerable. We did it backside, wrong-sided. We locked down the healthy and the well in the society the ones who were more able to cope with it and handle the virus, and we failed at the same time to protect the vulnerable. And that was what went wrong. So I'm saying that try and look at the Great Barrington Declaration. Look at that focused, age-restratified approach. It makes a lot of sense. And particularly, we knew out of the gate that COVID was amenable to risk stratification. And we knew also that early treatment worked. We have early treatment. So if you have elderly in, an, in a nursing home and you're strongly protecting them and you're allowing the rest of society, the well, to live unfettered lives, lives because they are healthy, their immune systems are strong, they could deal with the virus, they could develop natural immunity, get towards population immunity. If the elderly is ever infected, you have early treatment that they can get and be implemented and they will clear the virus, they will recover and now they too will be naturally immune. The problem is we chose to tie the hands of physicians and across the world, particularly in places like Canada and United States, prevented them from prescribing, prevented them from applying early treatment and many, many of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people died needlessly because there's good research that shows that early outpatient treatment, ambulatory treatment, given in that first two week window, properly dosed, properly timed, can reduce the risk of hospitalization and death by about 85 to 90%. That's the key. You wanna keep the person, the elderly high risk person in their home you don't want them going to the hospital. From the time you touch the emergency room door, your 20-day mortality risk skyrockets about 38%. So you want to keep them from getting there, and you can do that with early treatment. So I'm saying, why don't you strongly for the first time protect your high-risk people properly, allow the rest of society to breathe and to live normally, let them live, let them free, let them get natural exposure harmlessly.